Well, from there, there have been a lot of theories the last several years as to why high levels of phosphorus and other pollutants continue to plague Lake Erie. But could cattle be the cause? For the last several months, our 11 Investigates team has traveled repeatedly to Williams County to dig into the possibility. And tonight, lead investigator Brian Duggar brings you the results of our investigation. So I hope to be able to go into my little town of Eden. I'm tired of looking at cow manure. And we hope that we're that we're going to be able to get along with everyone. I can print you off the ODA requirements. I, if I want to take the yeah, manure. Yeah, requirements, but they don't follow them. Yeah, they do. That's no, something. they don't. We just had the ODA out here. Just well, a battle is raging in Northwest thing. Ohio. The lake people God. versus a group of Amish farmers. Farmers whose calves and cattle crowd the Williams County landscape. Caught in the middle are the waterways of the region. Creeks feeding into rivers. Rivers dumping into Lake Erie. Fish Creek is in Ohio, and then that drains to St. Joe's River, which meets in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where the Maumee comes in, and it comes to Lake Erie. So it's definitely a Lake Erie issue. Northwest Ohio, is one of the most highly tiled area because it used to be the black swamp and we're lacing tile like 40 feet apart. So anything that you spread on it, especially the liquid manure, gets into the tile system quicker. Where's the tile go? To the streams, to the St. Joe River, to the Maumee, to Lake Erie. Many of these are polluted waterways. Eleven investigates to analyze water samples of St. Joseph tributaries. Fish and Bear Creeks had troubling levels of E. coli. Levels above 1,000 would close a beach. Some testing points were 24 times that level. What changed in our watershed that caused this to happen? And it's that, you know, concentrating animals, too much manure. Piles and piles of manure. Manure left behind by nearly 100,000 calves and cattle from Schmucker Farms, one of the state's largest beef producers. Piles of manure that anger the lake people. Sandy Ben, Lyle Briggle, Susan Scatterall, Sherry Fleming, and Tim Bricker. It can't just be laying out in the field. They can't just push it out of the barn and leave it sit there. We know piles that have been out so long they have grass cover growing on them. That's what the issue is. That building out there, I don't have an issue with that. That I have an issue with. And the Ohio Department of Agriculture agrees. 11 investigates has learned that more than a dozen Schmucker properties are under state investigation. We've reviewed dozens of investigative files from the state and 16 properties received violations or warnings from the ODA in June and July. On each of these properties, manure handling is a concern. Pictures show large piles of manure, some of it running into nearby waterways. Michael Schmucker's property was one of those cited. Some of the piles that we had on the outside uh, were just some sites that we didn't have manure storage barns, which our goal is um, within the next couple, hopefully, you know, sooner than later have a manure storage barn to where we can store inside on everything. But two properties were cited for having more animals than the 999 allowed on a parcel. More than that number requires a permit, which comes with additional state scrutiny. The Schmuckers continue to buy more property in Northwest Ohio and to this point, none of those parcels have a permit. The genesis of that expansion was Indiana, early 2023. Okay. I was involved with a group in Indiana to fight the 8,000 head CAFO, and they, we did a big, giant presentation to the BZA, and that's how I became involved in it. An application for a special exception was submitted in Steuben County, Indiana. The Schmuckers and their partners, Wagler Associates, wanted permission to build a facility to hold 8,000 calves. Unanimous, five to zero, no. And after that is when he really exploded. I mean, it just outrageously exploded with the buying of the properties and bringing in the animals. 
Auditor records show a large number of parcel splits involving the Schmuckers and Wagglers in early 2023. Splitting a parcel allows them to build barns on each property and put fewer than 1,000 animals in each of those barns, avoiding a permit requirement. They're gaming it, yes. They know how to manipulate it. And our legislatures are doing nothing to protect what they should be protecting, what they're elected to protect. It is a loophole acknowledged by an ODA official in an email exchange obtained by 11 Investigates. The official says this is a way to avoid permitting. The same official then writes, we have to find a way to close this loophole. It is a problem. It, it looks like, just looking at the records, there's been a large number of uh, purchases and, and parcel splittings in Northwest Ohio. And just from an outsider perspective, it, it looks like you guys are just trying to do that to stay below this uh, thousand cattle threshold. Um, I mean, how would you respond to that? You know, we, we don't want to, um, we really don't. Our, our number one goal is, is we want to be good stewards to the land. The state has been ignoring this and I place as much or more blame on the legislature for not doing anything because the regulatory agencies can only do what authority they've been given through the law. Until there are changes, the battle will continue. It's in the Lake Erie watershed and that's why the interest. How in 2024 do you allow all these 78,000 cattle and all their manure, no permits, I would say with time we'll probably continue to grow. I don't want to be, you know, the eye of the bad guy. We hope that we're, you know, showing the way of, of real Christian life. That was Brian Duggar reporting from Williams County. There is much more on this story, including investigative documents on our website, WTOL.com.